I don't know. He thought he was waiting for something from us. So, uh, so anyway, I'll send that agreement out to everybody. You can look at it. I'll wait till Matt has reviewed it, and then we'll send it out to everybody and and uh, hopefully get that started so that we can have Bill meeting with the architects. Matt, you look like you want to comment. Well, the, the only thing that concerned me is your comment about uh, communicating by email on the subject. I mean, we, that is a topic that has to be discussed in an open meeting. So we can't do it, but to have that discussion privately by email. Well, okay, but we have discussed it so many times. All we're doing now is really acting on what we've discussed earlier, and it would be getting consensus to ratify later. Um, if you individually want to see whether there's support among the other eight members, call them up. You mean? Yeah. Then we can put way. it on the agenda in July or maybe next meeting. Is we'll have to develop a contract beyond Bill's proposal. Uh, I just we can't have board members. Or board members deliberating basically by email. That's my guess. Okay, yeah, it wouldn't be deliberation. It would be yeah or nay. Um, yeah, I, I do know that much. Okay, all right, we'll work this out somehow. Hopefully, to try to get action on this sooner rather than later. Um, all right, that's it. I, I just had that one part for facilities. Uh, Mr. Strauss, do you have anything to add to the finance report from last week? Nothing to add, but I just want to thank uh rick and the rest of the administrative staff that worked on the budget i know that's a big lift so everybody that had a hand in that uh thank you uh for all your work thank you. yeah there's never been uh i've never seen uh, a year when so many board members were involved uh, attended finance committee meetings i mean really th there was so much board involvement this year rick you probably noticed that there were times in the past where we had like the finance chair and one person maybe at those meetings we had three four five six people sometimes at finance committee meetings and i, I commend everybody yeah. for that that's really great yeah. I, i've always wondered how can you vote on the budget when you never came to a finance committee meeting to know what's in the budget well this time around everybody knows a piece of it so that's really good uh, and thank you rob so and, and rob will be uh, presenting that budget to us a little bit later um so a uh, board action is requested i'm moving on to section four please Board action is requested to approve the minutes from the May 24th, 2022 legislative meeting. So moved. Uh, Eric, uh, uh, Mr. Steadley. Second. Second, Dr. Thorpe. Any comment? All right. Uh, I just want to note that there's a nicer uh, commentary about the nature of the discussion that happened. All right, good. That's a compliment to you, Rick. So. It's a yes for Ashley. I'm in the car. I can't move. Hi, Ashley. Hey. Okay, that motion passed. Uh, let's see. So, coming under instructional staff here, Doctor Joe, we have a couple of things. These are all these are all yours as a new hire. Mm -hmm. Um, board action is requested to approve Alyssa Miller for a full-time elementary teaching position at step 11 with a master's uh, degree, teaching salary of $58,115 in all other terms and conditions of current CBA, effective first teacher day of 2022-2023. Um, just some comments um, that I, I wanted to, I, reaching out to her current principal, uh, Rodney Walker. Um, his comments were pretty impressive about her being dedicated and he, he mentioned equity she was a district leader in equity inclusion and diversity of course um, she managed a ten thousand dollar grant for students in need to, to attend field trips to places they, they would never have an opportunity to attend to wow. um yeah it was a quite a conversation with him um and one of the very best of implementing culturally relevant practices and the last thing that well, almost the last thing, but I wanted to provide a reference for a wonderful teacher that made a positive impact on my principalship in the communities that she has taught. Um, so I had a great conversation with Rodney Walker. He said the only problem with Vanessa, um, Alyssa was she's a Steeler fan. That was the only problem. So, <laughs> okay. should be forgiven. <laughs> yeah. we, we can, um, so, uh, okay, so we can uh, uh, comment more. Let's have a uh, uh, so moved, Ed. Second, Can I have a second? Uh, second from uh, from Dr. Bosick. All right. So under discussion, um, I I see that she's here. She is. She's traveled. She's been 
making her move back to Pennsylvania. She's been teaching in Virginia, Virginia, Virginia I believe. No, Maryland. North Anne Arundel, Anne Arundel County. Oh, okay. So, uh, so any um, uh, any comment before we vote? All right, we can congratulate her and welcome her as soon as we vote and make it official. Everybody has the voting window here. Yes, for Ashley. Motion passed. So, motion passed. You're officially part of the team. Hi, Alyssa. Hi. Where are you? I'm here. Can you see me? No, no, no. I mean, where are you? Are you in oh. Virginia? Nope, I'm officially back here in Pennsylvania right now. We just got here like an hour and a half ago. No kidding. Well, well, welcome, welcome back, welcome back. Thank so where you. you. Where will she? Will she be at Turner? Turner? Well, with the checkerboarding, we're leaning. It could end up being first grade, but that's not 100 percent sure. We let her know that. Okay. So. Okay. So you're flexible enough. You can have first grade, or wherever you land, you'll be okay. Yep, I'm excited. I bet. So are we. So are we. And All you're right. a certified reading specialist too. Yes. Or no? Oh, yeah. are you really? Oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah, that's a nice extra certification to bring along. That's yes, super. Definitely handy. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah. Well, right. Welcome. Welcome. Thank yeah. you. Thank so you so welcome much. Welcome aboard. Yep. Thank you're you. not your your official. Right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome to stay, but it's not that interesting. Um, uh, okay, so uh, FMLA, Dr. Mulishnik. Uh Yes. Um, board actions requested to approve an intermittent FMLA for Summer Pendro, Director of Curriculum, beginning June 2nd, 2022, ending June 2nd, 2023. And I think she kind of explained last week the situation for Grandma. Okay, uh, so moved. Second. All right, Donovan and Bosick. Um, any comment, Kristen? Okay. Everybody in? No, Ashley. Oh, Ashley, do you want to um, approve his retirement? No, no. Oh, yeah, this is, oh, oh yeah. no, I'm sorry. I jumped ahead. I'm sorry. This is, I'm sorry. It's not a retirement. This is Summer Pendro's FMLA. FMLA. Yeah, I'm a yes for that. Sorry. Okay, thank you. That's okay. No, I'm sorry. I asked you the wrong thing. Uh, six, six and one. Okay, so the motion passes. Um, all right, so, uh, and the next item is yours. Board actually has requested to approve the retirement of Donald Graham, staff coordinator. Uh, effective uh, August 15th, 2022. So moved. So, uh, so moved uh, steadily. I'll second. Any comment, question? Okay. Just while we're waiting to vote, he's retiring to go do something fun, isn't he? I'm not sure what, no, he, he doesn't have plans yet. I already asked. Oh, him, okay. So. Yeah, he. Uh, I thought he was going west to like. Oh, that was Mr. Bush. Oh, all right, okay, okay. Working in Yellowstone. So, yeah, right. So now, Mr. Graham, like it's that he also did, was our truancy officer for intermediate school too for approximately I think, 19 years. So I got to work closely with Mr. Graham when I was a principal of Turner. So um, he'll be missed. So we had a little celebration for him last day of school. So I'm Ashley. Uh, so Ashley, do uh, you want yes. to approve? Okay, great. Okay, I, I don't mean to bug you, uh, but. No, you're fine. Uh, you're not bugging me at all. I'm trying to push a button. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, if, if it's harder, if it's hard for you to push the button online, I'll just ask you each time. If, if that's easier for you. I know you're in the car. Uh, all so, right. I mean, I'm I'm almost there. I'm going to be there before the meeting's over, but yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. Cool. Okay, so board and committee reports. Uh, number one, joint tax committee. Um, uh, there was a meeting last night. Non-instructional staff. So non-instructional staff. I'm sorry. Why do I skip over that all the time? Um, um, board actually requested to approve the resignation of LaShonda Ramsey, a paraprofessional at Kelly Primary, effective June 1, 2022. So moved in. Any questions?
motion passed. Motion I'm a yes. Okay. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, board action is requested to recruit Shamina Yates as a floating security guard at an hourly rate of $20, uh, $20 an hour um, and all other terms and conditions attached, effective August 25th, 2022. So moved, Ed. Um, any questions or comments on this? No, do we know if she's here? I don't know if Shamina's on or not. Uh, um, I assume these uh, these candidates all have passed the uh, mandatory screening for Pennsylvania State. Yes. And uh, and and what kind of orientation to the district? Uh, do you mind describing that, or who who, who will she sort of work with or be mentored by? Or first time, first she'll come in and meet with Cindy and myself, of course. But then I'll introduce her to both security guards and what her role will be there um, as a, as the floating security guard. So. Um, those two together will be mentoring her along the way. Okay, so since she starts, August 25th must be really close to the beginning of school, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, so would everybody be okay if, we, if it incurs a little bit of extra money? I mean, if we need to bring in Mr. Smith and and, uh, and the uh, Turner Guard I mean, for an orientation or something like that, a little bit in advance, I mean, that would be great. Okay. I mean, you know, just so she doesn't start she cold on that day. She'll be traveling between both schools. So definitely if one of them are out, she'll be filling in. Oh, I see. Um, <laughs> and then at one of the buildings, if they're both there, she could be monitoring the cameras while the other person is checking moving doors. around the building, checking doors. Or if there's an event at one school, I mean, we feel better with two people mm -hmm. there. So, okay, that's great. Okay, that motion passed. Thanks, everybody. Um, um, Ashley, yes, for Ashley. And Ms. Yates, if you're here, um, just say hi. All right, and we have a resignation, Dr. Joe. I think it's Rick, you want that one? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Rick. That's all right. Board action is requested to approve the resignation of Curtis Jefferson, a nighttime custodian at Turner Primary. Should be Turner Intermediate, sorry. Uh, effective July 1st, 2022. So moved, uh, Ed. Any discussion here? Uh, Curtis was a really good guy. I got to meet him, and but Amazon was yes. more attractive to him for now. So he might be delivering a package on your very doorstep sometime soon. Uh, okay, that's it for non-instructional staff, right? Still wait for two votes. Oh, Rob and Ashley. Yes. Wait for Rob. Yep. Okay, we're good. All right. Now, Section 8, uh, Board uh, uh, Committee reports that Joint Tax Committee did finally meet last night. There were no uh, 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 applications uh, actually to approve, uh, but the, the borough uh, representatives wanted to go ahead and meet anyway. I could not be there because of the community meeting uh, at Hosanna House. Rob could not be there because, well, because his, his time on the board is expiring, so Rick our third member did attend and um, told me that in my absence, they elected me to be vice chair of the Joint Tax Committee, which I'll, I'll fix them for that um, the next time we meet. And uh, there were a couple other documents and things that were uh, up for anything, anything, nothing real significant, no, happened, right, Rick? Nothing. So um, there was only two, um, two other members there in person and Kate Luxemburg presented okay. some things okay. on county assessments. Okay. Uh, so uh so okay everybody so uh you know our resolution when we joined uh, the joint tax committee states that our representatives will be the president or his or, or their designee uh the finance chair or their designee and the business manager i think or their designee so um so i had that all wrong we just i just tried to straighten it out and then we're losing people so i don't know how to move ahead with this um I'm probably gonna, while I talk to you all and, and see if anybody's gonna volunteer to be the new finance chair, um, I, uh, I'll i step in and do that for the month of July. Rick's dreading that, but uh, but I'll step in and do it for the month of July. But so a couple of things, if anybody's interested in becoming the new finance chair, please let me know. Um, that would also get you on the joint tax committee. Uh, we do have to have three people, you know, on that committee um it's important that we do 
Uh, so, and I'm going to recommend to them that that committee only meets every other month. I don't think we need to have a meeting on the books for every month. But so if you're interested in the finance committee, finance chair position, uh, please let me know about that. That would, uh, that would be great to get resolved. Yeah, can I say something about that? Yes, just absolutely. So, just so we're all clear too, uh, which was made clear to me last night. In the bylaws, I, apparently it states that you know, we have to have two elected officials from the district attend those meetings because neither one were there last night, I became the elected official. So I had to actually vote in your behalf. You voted for me to become the vice chair? Why well, I have a choice. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll deal with this later. <laughs> but anyhow, um, yeah, so it would have passed anyhow, but, uh, but so I became the voting member. Okay. So just so people know, if they go and there's not a board member there, they are now voting. I see, I get I it. didn't know if that was, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't that. sound right. To uh, me. That doesn't sound right to me. But that was um. Mrs. All we Richardson. did was elect as vice chair. I don't think that's too problematic. No, it was Mrs. Well, they elected the chair as well, but same thing. Um, it was Mrs. Richardson that stated that to me because I tried to say I, I'm not a voting member. She said you have to vote. I don't think that's. We'd have to go through that. I mean, it's not that consequential. No. All they did was put me in a but position that I don't really want. But but we'll have to. Um, but we'll have to look at that because I don't think that's right about the voting. You know. Yeah, I don't think it is okay, and I don't know why all three members from the school district wouldn't be voting members. Why would you be there if you can't vote? I mean, you know what I mean? You're not an elected board member, but you're on the. Well, how could? Why would you be there if you can't vote? Same with John. He's not allowed to vote. But he's not a member of that. John Antolino. Yeah, he's not. He he attends as the borough manager, but and I, and I attend as the borough the school businessman. Yeah, but you're one of our three. You know what I mean? Yeah, we can look at that. Let's so yeah, we'll have to look at that. Yeah, look at that. I, I believe you have voting rights. That's um, fine. So no that's problem. what we would have to look at. So okay, thank you. Um, uh, I'll just add, yeah, let's talk about uh, finance. Yeah. All right. We could even co-do it. I mean, uh, to share the lift or something like that. Um, if anybody's interested in that. Um, I know we need we need someone to step up. And I'm, I'm willing to step up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so that's great. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Forbes Road. Michael, are you? I don't think Michael's here. I know that there was a meeting, um, and he he told me that he was able to attend it, but he, uh, I don't think he's here tonight. So we'll we'll pass on his report. Eastern area, uh, Eric. I know you sent something out to us related to uh, Eastern area, but uh, it's the floor is yours. Okay, so uh, the Eastern Area School Board. Uh, uh, voted to approve a two-year extension of the joint year agreement. Uh, this happened uh, at the prior meeting. Um, a number of boards around uh, around the region must now vote on that, including our board. Um, the agreement, I, I think it was delayed somehow. It didn't, it didn't make its way to the agenda. Um, I don't see it on the agenda right now. But uh, the agreement, uh, Matt has taken a, a look at this agreement and reviewed it. Um, you know, basically what it does is uh, the prior agreement, its length was five years in, in, in its term. Uh, the current agreement, not, not everyone felt like they wanted to renew the agreement for five years. At the request or the suggestion of the solicitor, uh, we amended the agreement to make it two years. That made it more palatable for many of the districts to go ahead and commit to that. Um, my understanding is that there will be two districts and likely a third that will not approve the uh, jointure agreement. Um, I do think that we need to have a longer discussion with council, um, with solicitors in the other districts about what that means if they do not approve the agreement. Um, I believe that a majority is necessary to make the agreement sticky, to, to make it legally binding. I do think that it's likely that the other districts will, will probably have to uh, at least deal with the ongoing problem of what to do with the real estate interest that they own after they leave the jointure. Uh, that is one of the points that Matt brought up. Uh, separately, you know, it's not clear how um, districts should leave the jointure, um, how they would do that, what type of process that they would follow. Uh, it's also not clear how other districts might enter uh, the jointure and be allowed to participate like we do. Um, I think, you know, my goal with trying to extend the agreement by two years 
um, was to allow for time to negotiate those things and to put those into some sort of form like a bylaw or um, some type of policy that the EAS board adopts and that we, we then ratify. If we were able to do that, then we would be able to find a way for districts to come into and exit from the jointure agreement, which I think is the big problem. Everybody seems to want to get out of this jointure agreement as soon as they learn that they, they're part of it. Um, uh, longer term, you know, there's a very good reason for us to continue to participate in the jointure. The jointure does uh, provide us with an economic advantage because we participate as a district. Uh, we get a voting advantage to kind of influence how the budget is spent, what things are, are, are acted upon, uh, and also, you know, what, um, what the, the direction of the school generally. Um, speaking with the AIU, uh, the AIU provides the educational services. They run the entire program. They, they hire all the staff. Uh, they hire the principal and maintain their position there. Uh, they hire a custodian to take care of the building. Um, we should, as the building owners, uh, as partial building owners, we should be maintaining some other things there. We, we have some costs associated with that. However, overall, our students enjoy a, a significant discount of the tuition involved in attending that school. Uh, we do not have to pay for any of the maintenance fees on the building because we're part of the jointure. Any district that has uh, students <coughs> at the facility that does not participate in the jointure pays an extra fee of $3,500 per year per student. Um, that goes to the building maintenance fees. It's very likely that that cost will increase over time because of the difficulties with the building. The building needs a significant amount of uh, work and uh, it's likely that that cost will increase over time. Um, we, we actually tried, the board uh, proposed an increase in that cost by $1,000 per student per year. Um, that mess, that, that uh, vote failed because it did not have the proper quorum. Um, it's very likely that if the other schools exit the jointure and do not participate next time, that it's likely that that initiative will pass next time. So likely we're looking at $1,000 per student increase. Um, last I checked, we had five students at the school. I think that's still true. It looks like Dr. Joe, you're confirming that. Um, and so our cost is likely to increase by about $5,000, which, you know, is modest in the, in the scheme of things. Uh, and I think we, we certainly have that type of budget available. So um, in any case, my recommendation is that we approve the jointure uh, agreement. We continue to participate in the jointure. It gives us an advantage in the cost of our students, and it's also an excellent facility as far as you know being able to teach them the skills that they need. Um, so that's my recommendation. I don't know what we need to do about the jointure agreement. Um, we may have to call a special session to approve that. It's on it, the agenda. It, it is on the agenda. I'm out under uh, board of governance. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. I, I, I'm looking at the agenda. We're under eight. C, I think, and I'm, um, and so under L, we will approve the agreement. We will take a vote on the agreement. Hopefully, we can approve it. Um, and um, if there's any questions, I'll take those at this time. If you have any ideas or, or, or thoughts about this, Eric, why are people opting out of it? Just out of curiosity, you know, I mean, it seems to. I mean, I was there with you and Dr. Joe. It was a it's a fabulous facility, but where are they going to send these kids? I mean, why why are they opting out? Yeah, um, that's a good question, and I think there's 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 two sides to that discussion. So uh, number one, I think I think it's largely um, most of the cost of participating in the in the jointure is assessed by the real estate assessments of the district that you're in, right. and it's proportional to those real estate assessments. We here in Morgansburg, we have a, a relatively low assessment at, at what sounds like a huge number, but it's around four hundred million dollars or so. We might have the, the actual number. But if you compare that to the assessed value of real estate in, say, Gateway, where Monroeville is, where all the huge buildings and businesses are, you know, it's a, it's a huge value. It's over a billion dollars there. So they pay as a much higher percentage of the overall costs of maintaining this building. That's the entry fee that we pay to get into this jointure. Each district pays a proportion based on that whole. We add up all those proportions. Then we take your proportion as a district and, and divide it into that, and then that's your percentage. So 
the other districts are really looking at you know relatively high costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to participate in this yearly our cost is in the tens of or maybe you know low 100s uh, of thousands of dollars to participate so we get a, a you know pretty significant advantage they don't like the idea of paying that much to maintain this building that's the primary reason they want to exit I'll also say that there is generally the AIU encourages and the districts are aware of the fact that, you know, in, in, in general, um, the AIU wants districts to be able to take care of special education students. And it's okay for the students to go into this program, learn what they need to learn, and then return back to the school as long as the school has the facilities and the ability to handle those students. So generally, there should be a flow back to the districts. And I think a number of districts are at the point where they realize they probably can take a number of their students back. If this Sunrise School closes and, and it's not available to them, they have the facility there to take care of those students. So they don't see it as a net, uh, as much of a benefit as, say, we do. In our district, we don't have necessarily all of the facilities to take care of those special education students. Um, you know, we can take care of most of our students. I think we take care of about 25 or so. But, you know, with the, the, the students with the profound difficulties are much better suited for that school for them. So, so I'd say it's two reasons primarily. I mean, it's, 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 it's cost for the districts and what they feel is, is the value that they're getting out of it and, and the desire to bring their students back to their own districts. So I think that's primarily driving it. Um, you know, I'll also comment because if, if, you know, there might be other districts out there that have an interest in getting into this um, because they have a lot of students there. I've looked at the numbers and it looks like a, um, a Woodland Hills is one that participates and they have a lot of students there. They're the highest number. Um, New Kensington does not participate. They have a higher number of students than even Woodland Hills does. And it might make sense for them financially to join the jointure agreement, reduce the amount of cost that they pay, it might be a net benefit for them. And so I think that's one of the reasons that I, I'd like to go and work on trying to figure out how to get the bylaws changed so that you know some districts that have the advantage and could use the um, ability to do so, they, they can get into this. The districts that want to get out, they can get out. And we just need to define the terms on which that happens. I think that's the right, right thing to do. So. So, so are you saying that under the current bylaws, New Ken can't join? There's no way. There's no way to join. There's no way to, to reform the jointure, um, and you know we've we've asked council to explain how that might happen. Um, they have not been able to find a way to do that yet, or at least they haven't found a way to articulate that to us. I mean that. Um. That just ought to be doable somehow, shouldn't it, Matt? I mean, it seems crazy to exclude new people from coming in. But yeah, I mean, you have to understand the school exists by virtue of the agreement of the parties. So bringing a new member in is amending that agreement that would require the consent of all of members of that agreement. So I've not studied the you know, jointure agreement uh, beyond this issue of the termination. Um, it's so, I mean, I have to defer to the Eastern Area Solicitor, but I, I, I've got to believe that it you know, can be defined. Yeah, it seems like it'd be, that'd be crazy to not want to amend that I, agreement. I, Besides, I agree if, with you. I, if it's I, the I, original one from 1964, it ought to be looked at anyway. I, I think part of the problem here is that um, our council may not be sufficiently skilled in order to be able to give us good advice about. Um, th this agreement was built, as you say, in 1974, and then it's been renewed continuously since that date. Um, it's been renewed in five-year increments, and I don't think anybody has ever really questioned, you know, how this agreement should be changed or, or, you know, what, why it should be changed in the first place. Um, I only think it's it's now that the, the costs of this of maintaining the school have gone so high. That I think people are looking to get out of this agreement because they just they they don't really feel like they can afford those costs. Okay. I mean, can, if there's anything I can do, I don't think there would be. But I think your idea about trying to find a way to 
amend <coughs> amend it so that new districts could join is only common sense. So I think that is one of the primary things I'd like to try to achieve. You know, it, it, since the, the, there's impetus to try to exit the agreement, I think we might have to define that first. Um, and then, but I, I think it's it's useful to use that as leverage to try to define the other part of the process. Uh, because I, I'm afraid that the jointure will dissolve completely if enough schools leave. And I think we, there is that risk right now. So. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to belabor this. But so right now, there's no mechanism in the agreement for somebody to opt out. Exactly. So, <clears throat> okay. You know, just to throw out a similar maybe kind of thing, um, Forbes Road, we were an original partner in that. You know, and but that board won't let us out. You know, I mean, we've been a member there. We've had to maintain our membership there. We don't send students, but we've had to maintain our membership in that consortium for what eight years now, I guess. You know, uh, since and we have to pay our stipend every year. We don't pay any tuition, but we have to pay our stipend every year. They won't let us out. All they do is every couple of years they vote to allow us to to, to allow us to send our CTE kids to PPS instead, all right? They have to grant permission for us to send them outside of Forbes Road. So I'm just saying, if Forbes Road won't let us out, maybe Eastern area shouldn't be too flexible about letting anybody else out. I'm just, here's, here's my question. Um, who is the solicitor for Forbes Road? Do you know who they are? I, I should, I know that name. I, I'll get it for you. Let's find out. Maybe it would be helpful to have who is that? Yes, uh, Jordan, yes. Yeah. Gateway. Bruce Dyson. Bruce Dice. Bruce yeah, Dice. Yes, Bruce Dice. Yeah, yeah, right, yes. His name is Bruce Dice. Yes, D I C E. I mean, so I'm just giving, throwing out an example. They're both jointures that were created for similar kinds of reasons, probably very different bylaws when they were formed, but. Um, uh, it's not like the Eastern Area Board has to let anybody leave because, as an example, Forbes Road won't allow us to formally leave either. Oh, and I don't want to get too deep in the weeds. Okay. No tech schools, there's provision of the school code that implicated the, the necessity of what Forbes Road does with us. There's no such school code provision relative to the Eastern Area. Oh, you are always quite, ruin my not quite <laughs> apples to apples. <laughs> Forget it, Merrick. We need a new solicitor. <laughs> all right, thank you. But it might be worth it to talk to Dice anyway. But all right, it might be. Thank you. All right. Okay. Sorry about all of this. Uh, uh, let's see. Where are we? I'm sorry. The treasurer's report. I, I lost my. I lost the agenda. So, um, um, <clears throat> board action is requested to ratify and confirm the June 2022 general fund payments. The amount of one million five hundred and forty-seven thousand three hundred and thirteen dollars and sixty-four cents, and wire transfers in the amount of one million three hundred and seventy-one thousand four hundred and six dollars and seventy-seven cents. The following reports as of May thirty-first, twenty twenty-two, will be made a matter of record in the minutes. One statement of revenue and expenditures. Two balance sheet and three bank account summary cash. So moved, Ed. Uh, any discussion? I just want to make a comment. Like when people do, well, like Eric said, you know, he could probably help lift with the finance committee. Uh, this isn't casting aspersions on anybody. I just want to say, command Danny. I've been in his house when his entire dining room table, which is large, is covered with bills and papers and things from the school district that came out of a giant box. It's like it's a lot. Um, to, to do that job. So thank you, Dennis, a oh, lot. You're welcome. I mean, I'm sure everybody thanks you because somebody has to do that job and you do it well. Rick, can you vote for me? I'm a yes. Ashley. All right, that motion passed. Uh, okay, so finance, um, the anticipation that Rick. Board of action is requested to approve the tax anticipation note for Forbes Road Career and Technical Center per attached. I so moved that. Second. Uh, so uh, we have any discussion on that? All right. I, I, I 
got to be honest, I didn't get a chance to read this. Is, is there anything in here that we need to worry about? No. Does anybody know? No, there's not. Um, well, it's just our part allowing them to borrow money to start their year off. Uh, lots of school districts have to do that. We don't Correct. anymore, but we used to. Uh, it's just it's a, like a short term loan, like a bridge loan to get your school year started until the tax money starts flowing in. Monica and Ashley. Monica and Ashley. Uh, yes, for me. Yes. Okay. Ashley, yes. Or I got it here. Okay, so okay, that motion passes. So uh, the item B is approving the new uh, the budget for twenty two twenty three and uh, hey, I, they're what? switched. It's tax rate and it's you first. You look at the agenda, the agenda. Okay, I'm looking at an old copy of the agenda. I'm sorry. All right, okay. I don't know how we continue to do. So we're on number C. I don't know how we continue to do this uh, to to be able to reduce the millage rate. It's just when when I first came on the board, I thought it would be impossible to ever lower our taxes. This is the fourth time. We've been able to do it. So congratulations to us and to administration. Uh, you know, and probably that long period of time when Dr. Iverson was here and Rick here um, to be able to make our district so efficient that we can do this four times. And I think last week when we met, Rob calculated that it's about a 15, between 15 and 20 percent cumulative reductions since the since the first time we did it. That's huge. Every dist no district in the state is able to do that. So, so I think we can pat ourselves on the back about being able to lower the millage rate. Um, so board action is requested to approve the local tax rates for 22-23 as follows. The real estate tax, 24.5 mils, that is $24.50 per $1,000 of assessed value. This equates to a two mil reduction from the 21-22 fiscal year. Uh, Act 511 earned income tax, that's the EIT, is 50%. Uh, the real estate, is that 50%? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my glasses are all dirty. Uh, the real estate transfer tax is 0.05%, is it? Yes. Okay, thank you. And the Act 511 local service tax, EST, is $5 a year. Correct. All right, I got that one right. Thank you, everybody. All right, that's all. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second, Dr. Wasik. Any discussion on this? I would just like, I would just throw out there that I think we can all feel really good that we're able to do this. As you talk to people in the community and people want to pat you on the back a little bit, remember to tell people that there's an end to this at some point. I mean, don't get used to us being able to reduce the rate every year because in my calculation this might be the last time we're able to do it people should be glad that we're trying hard but I, this is not something we can keep doing uh, reducing our revenue but uh, i just i say that to my neighbors just so they get real about it not to expect us to do this every year okay i'll, I'll vote ashley yes I was trying to get there in person for this one, but I'll see you all in like two minutes. <laughs> uh, and we've got Monica's? Everybody voted yes. Okay, good. So that's unanimous. Great. Correct. Thanks, everybody. All right, so now I'll, I'll go in the right order. So uh, with very little arm twisting, Rob Strauss stepped in this year and volunteered to be the finance chair and did, uh, did I think, a yeoman's job at that, uh, that work, plus building the, the biggest part of that, well, I don't know, if it's the biggest part a big part of it is building the budget for the for the new year coming up and uh so i asked rob if he would read the resolution to approve the new budget all right yeah and, and just want to make sure you know we we state out front is that yes we are seeing an increase in the state budget uh coming to us but we also were able to increase funding for students administrators faculty and making sure we're meeting all the needs across the board for the district with this budget and then we were able to do the tax break on top. So it really is, it's great to see it all come together. And, you know, part of this is supporting Kelly renovations. We're going to continue to grow the fund balance. And what this budget does is it allows us to do everything and, and anything that, you know, as a part of the school district that you'd want to see. Um, so board action is requested to approve the Wilkinsburg school district final budget for fiscal year 2022-2023 with a millage rate of 24.5 per $1,000 
and file attached PDE 2028 forms with the Department of Education as required by state law. The 2022-2023 total revenues are 36918402 Total expenditures are 36918402 Revenue includes using 5400000 of ARP funds. Budget is created with $4,551,058 of fund balance contingency to pay professional salaries. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? I don't know. When I got here, our budget was about $27 million a year. Yep. You know what I mean? Correct. So look at the growth. It's pretty remarkable. Um, Monica and Ashley. Monica and Ashley, do you want to have a new budget or not? Yes. I do. Yes. 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 All right. Thank you very much. That's unanimous, I guess. Okay. That motion passes unanimously, and that wraps up Section 11 Finance. Policy 246. Dr. Monoshnik. Uh, board actions request to approve the second and final reading of Policy 246, the School Wellness. Uh, so moved. Ed. Second. Ed. Oh, any discussion on this one? Okay. Uh, do we have a phys ed instructor at the district? Uh, two, of two them? one in each building. Okay. They're part of the one team. at each school? One in each school. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, they're good, uh, by the way, too. I mean, not that they're not all good. Yes, for Motion passed. All right, that motion passed. Uh, let's see, um, moving into board governance. And then I have a couple like sort of uh, announcement things to throw in here at some point, but th they're not on the agenda. Board action is requested to approve participation by up to five school directors to attend the 2022 PSBA conference at Pocono Manor, Pennsylvania at an estimated cost of $1,375 per person. That's a $425 registration fee, about $600 for lodging, and about $300 for incidentals like travel and stuff like that. For a total estimated cost of $6,875 to be paid from the general fund, there's a line in there for board expense. Um, uh, so this is budgeted for uh, all in in incidental expenses must adhere to the district's travel policy. That means no booze, among other things. But um, uh, So that's that. So moved. Uh, the people who move and motion uh, and second this motion automatically get to go to the conference if they <laughs> if they want to. So I just thought I'd throw that out. Ashley. Yes. I'm literally getting out the car. <laughs> oh, come on in. We'll hear the door going. Okay, that motion passed. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, if it seems like sending five people, we didn't usually have sent, maybe we sent two or three people, but there's a pent up need for professional development on the board. That's why I asked for five. Uh, a field mm -hmm. round, Dr. Milosevic. Board actions requested to approve the Wilkinsburg cheerleaders to rent and use the Turner Field per district policy. So moved, Ed. Second one. Any discussion? Um, do we have an instructor for the cheerleaders? Who's who's the, leading the um, the effort here? That's all. Through, that's Washington? all through that or, their organization. So once you get into school districts, once you get to a certain grade, like it's usually outside the organization. So we don't have an involvement in that. Okay. They're not cheerleaders for it's, our district. It's the Wilkinsburg. It's the Wilkinsburg Athletic Association. So it's the Little League organization specifically representing Wilkinsburg. There are Wilkinsburg residents that play, but surrounding communities, depending on what the current status is with their own community sports, could change that. But this is the Wilkinsburg Athletic Association. Thanks, Ash. Okay. If there's any way we can get just a responsible person to, to identify as you know, point of contact. Oh, their name's probably on the application. Yeah, it's, uh, Trevor Williams. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's Trevor Williams. Um, uh, 
is that is that person, Eric? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and I finally don't have to take calls from Trevor anymore because um because we got this all settled through the administration running it now. Um, let's see. So uh, so where are we? I didn't see. Wait, wait, Juanita and oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Yes, for Ashley. Motion passed. All right, that motion passed. Rick, insurance. Board action is requested to approve the district liability insurance rate for the 22-23 fiscal year at a total cost of $167,800 per attached breakdown. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, do we have a copy of the policy on board on somewhere? Or? We will be getting that after the board approves them. Yep, I'll put it out there. Uh, Dennis, Juanita, and Ashley. So once the baby gets here. <laughs> Dennis, Juanita, and Ashley. I know it. Yes. Okay. Look at him. Oh, look at all that hair. I'm sorry, we're all oogling over a baby here. Motion. Uh, that motion passed. Uh, all right, item D, extension of monthly stipends. You recall that we did this to uh, to piece together human resource function in the district while we decide what we want to do about a human resource officer. So, Rick. Board action is requested to approve additional monthly stipends for Paul Paradise of $700, Summer Pendro of $450, and Cynthia Bogate of $450 for additional duties related to human resources, effective January 2022 through September of 2022. Total expenses not to exceed $10,350 to be paid for from general fund. Note stipends have already been paid for this for this work through June 30th of 2022. Oh, so moved dead. Second. Discussion, questions. Um, I, I want to make a comment about this. Um, I, I, I'm becoming uh, increasingly uncomfortable with the idea of sharing the human resources function um, inside the school amongst three people. I'd really like to um, move towards hiring a, a permanent HR person uh, for, for a number of reasons, but um, you know, I, I, I'd really like for people uh, that currently do their jobs to kind of focus on their jobs, not have this extra burden on them. Um, and I think yeah, you know, having an HR person in-house in would, would take a lot of load off of, I'm sure that you're, you're dealing with a lot of these things, interviewing and such. Um, so I, I'd like to propose that we uh, we move toward that. Um, I, as far as approving these, I think this makes sense. I mean, we've already paid this cost, so I think that makes sense to me. Okay. So I anyway. couldn't agree with you more. So I, I think we got in the weeds a little bit about what kind of qualifications we wanted such a person to have. So how about if we circulate the existing HR director job description that we have? And everybody have a chance to look at that so that we can um, you know, make sure that that describes the kind of person that we need. All right, so that if we want to make modifications to that job description or the, the, the qualifications of such a person, we can make those, then get that job advertised. All right, the board. pardon me? Send that to the board. Yeah, do you mind? No. Okay. Okay, that's great. So um, did we vote on this one? Uh, we're ready for Ashley and Eric. Yes. I'm not in. <laughs> okay, Netflix is me. All right, now that motion passes. Netflix, Rick. Board actions requested to approve an agreement with Netflix for the use of the Wilkinsburg High School for 15 days in August at a rental rate of $7,500 plus an additional $2,500 for cleanup. Also, reimbursement for all utilities during the 15 days will be paid by Netflix on a prorated basis. Paid for from, well, that should not be say paid for from general fund. Sorry. Uh, that's good. Okay. Uh, so moved, Ed. Second. Here. 
Any discussions? Okay. Oops. I, I think the extra uh, cost for cleanup covers our concerns. I think that's what we had last time. Kind of makes it easy for us to clean up after them. <clears throat> Great idea. They are looking for extras. <laughs> Monica. Monica. Can you vote yes? I didn't. I was waiting for the pop up. I didn't get it. Sorry. Motion passed. It. All right, that motion passed. Uh, item F: Conference request. Dr. Malushnik. Board actions requested to approve uh, Lonzo Boyce to attend the Pasro conference from July 18th to 20th at a cost not to exceed $700 paid for from the general fund. So moved that. Second. Uh, so that's the Pennsylvania Association of School Resource Officers, by the way. Yeah, um, and he'll bring back information for Officer Smith as well. Okay, is that a local? Con I mean, how can it be only seven hundred dollars? No, it's not local. It's in Harrisburg. But yeah, did, but, did, he, did he ask? Travel. He hasn't even put on his request. His travel. They might be paying yeah. for him. Hmm. Um, yeah. We'll have to look at it. We don't. Let's take a look at this. We don't want him paying out of pocket. To There's go a to chain, that. and we can add that to the next month. Or you could just increase the 700 now, just to be safe, not to exceed. Okay, so could I? Yes. Yeah, so could I suggest a change to this, everybody? I don't want. We don't want Lonzo paying out of pocket to do this. So just in case, just in case, can we amend this, please? Can we agree to amend it to say out of cost, not to exceed what a thousand dollars? Maybe. I mean that works. Let's do fifteen hundred. Okay, that, okay, one thousand five hundred dollars paid for from general fund. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. 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 I mean, is anybody that. not okay with it? Let me put it that way. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. It just seemed like that wasn't enough. It does seem. Yeah, that that wasn't enough money to like spend. The registration fee. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. That might yeah. just be the registration fee, but it's eighteen, nineteen, twenty-three days in Harrisburg. I mean, yeah. what what's he gonna eat? <laughs> So okay. Yeah. Waiting for a Rob and Juanita. Um, well, are we amending it in the in the? I'll amend, I'll amend it in the minutes. Is that okay, Matt? Okay. Yeah, we're voting on the amended version that I read. Please. If you already voted on the original one and you want to change your vote, that's okay. You can just say so. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Uh, uh, item G, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, we passed. Okay, that passed. Uh, item G, uh, board actions requested to approve the 2022-2023 contract extension with Presley Ridge at an annual cost of $186,375 or $18,637.50 per month. This is an increase of $10,875 over the 21-22 uh, uh, school year contract. So uh, second. Any discussion? Uh, so they came down a bit on that increase, didn't they? they? Did. It was about a twenty thousand dollar increase. Yeah, they um, came down about ten thousand dollars, and then made the edits that Matt recommended. Okay, I think that was the one that he recommended edits for. I got to meet both of the instructors for that program at the Turner uh, Promotion Day, and they they're so happy to be here, and they really want to expand the services they're providing for next year uh, to provide some community community yeah. outreach, mentorship, different yeah. things like that that are really would be important for those kids. Um, yep. uh, I just wanted to make a comment about this. Um, and I had looked at this before and I, I talked with, um, with Ed Matt, Joe, you guys know about this. Um, just for the benefit of the rest of the board, um, the Wilkinsburg Education Association and the uh, Wilkinsburg Educational Support Professional Association, they, they are able to provide a similar service to what these folks provide. Um, in years past, we've had um, a memorandum of understanding that has been circulated to both the unions so that they understand that we're contracting out for these services. They're okay with that. Um, we believe that that memorandum covers this um, this new contract at this point uh, because the memorandum is not dated. It doesn't have a specific date on it. So I just want to make sure everybody was aware of the fact that the, the, the WEA does have some um, some input on whether we whether we do this or not um, because of their uh, you know their special status in the collective bargaining agreement. So uh, thank you for that. Um, uh, expansion. 
motion passed. Okay, that motion passes. Um, a field trip, Dr. Maloshnik. Uh, yes, field board actions requested to approve. Oh, no, wait, Coach, I'm sorry. I read the wrong um, board actions request to approve a pre K through six field trip to Heinz Field on July 13, 2022, at a cost not to exceed $1,365 for admission and transportation paid for from the ESSER funds. So moved, Ed. Okay. So what is it? So how can we send that many kids? I mean, it, this is not for program. all of them. Yeah, it's for summer enrichment kids. Oh, for those for the summer enrichment kids. Okay, fine. I was thinking, I, how can we send the whole district to? Okay, for for thirteen hundred bucks. All right. Motion passed. That motion passed. Uh, teach plus. Uh, we, yeah, we board actions requested to approve teach plus per, per the attached documents. There's no cost to the district. Second. Any discussion? Questions? Okay. Is this solely a Pennsylvania initiative? Um, you know. uh, I think Ohio PA, don't, don't get me wrong, they just, I know they hired a guy from our consortium. Um, and so I think it's just right now what I heard is a few schools, they selected a few schools to contact to see if I they see. were interested. So they're one of those few schools, but I think it's less than 10 schools is what I was going to see. I thought uh, saying back six to eight, six to eight schools. Motion passed. Okay, that motion passed. Um, let's see, waterfront learning. Uh, um, board actions requested to approve the waterfront learning contract extension for the 2022 2023 May. I'll fix that. Yeah, at a cost of $1,000 for site license, $500 for a half day of training and per student cost of $730 each, not to exceed $51,110 for approximately 70 students. Now we, we estimated high on that um, this year. I think we were right around 50, but we just estimated high just in case. We don't, we don't know what the fall is going to bring. So. Uh, oh, so moved. Sorry. Second. Any other any discussion or questions on this one? You know, this is provides a lot of the materials and support for the um, for the online program, for the online program, the virtual academy. Yeah. Motion passed. All right, that motion passed. Thank you, everyone. Uh, item K. Board actions requested to approve the CPI crisis training at a cost of three thousand eight hundred and ninety nine dollars per person we'll have i believe two people attend but then they'll be certified to teach our staff and then we have to do this every year uh, so moved ed well i'm sorry i'll second uh, so ashley and then ed Refresh you said we're sending two two people. Yeah, and that's every way that does no CPI. It's it's our restraint training for. Okay, I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that clear. It's through the uh, Crisis Prevention Institute, and it's consistent with what Presley Ridge is doing. So we're all doing the same same <coughs> thing uh, in house. So. Motion passed. That motion passed. Uh, all right. Finally, one more Eastern Area School. Do you want this one, Aaron? You've been working with it. Or you want me to take it? There. Eric, do you want to read this one since you're our guy there? Uh, sure. I'm sorry. I that was uh, like realized we came up here. Um, board action is requested 
to approve the resolution between Eastern Area Schools and the Wilkinsburg School District to extend the jointure for an additional two years as presented. See attached document. School years through June 30th, 2024. It's read so calmly, you know, slowly, calm reading instead of racing it through it the way I do. Uh, so moved, Ed. Any discussion, questions? <clears throat> we'll just have to add two oh, years of the yeah. yeah, I'll add that in a minute. That's, yep. And I'll fix that one where it says years. Do I need to get refresh? Why am I saying this? Okay, okay. Okay, so is that on there? It's on the new agenda. Okay, okay. I, I'm, 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 I'm hitting refresh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. No wonder I was confused about this stuff. I, I was looking at the old version of the agenda. Okay, I, I know what's left, and I. Uh, Ashley, are you? Yes. I know what's left here, and I hate to. Uh, with with uh, great uh, regret. Um, I will ask the board to approve the uh, the resignation of uh, Rob Strauss uh, from the board, uh, and also, uh, you know, of course, as finance chair. Um, so, effective June thirtieth, twenty twenty two. I know we don't want to, but so we have to vote on it. Okay, right? Is there a second? Second one. What if we all vote no? Does he have to stay? <laughs> I don't want to understand that. Well, Just, um, we, we could ask Rob if he's changed his mind at this point. I did. I, I, I did yesterday. Have you changed your mind at all? Uh, sorry, I just voted yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 <First word>. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a pleasure, though. You guys are great. No, thank you for everything, Rob. I mean, it's really. Um, yeah, I know you probably you wouldn't have gotten roped into this if Jerome hadn't been out a walk on some fateful day and met you about this. But um, but thanks a lot for your service. Well, I appreciate Thank you. Pass five one one. Five one one. Yeah. Really? And we one had an no abstention. Abstent we had a no and an abstention, so that barely squeaked through. Uh, uh, so all right, before we adjourn, I have like I'm sorry, quickly just some announcements here because there were questions about it. So number one. The Wilkinsburg community meetings, there have been two of them so far uh, to invite the community to talk with us, to hear about the, uh, uh, from the WCDC about plans for marketing the high school building. Um, and uh, that's part of our agreement with them that they would do this, provide a professional facilitator and so on. Uh, I was at the first one and and uh, Michael was there and, and Ashley was there and uh, and Monica was there. Uh, and for the second one yesterday, uh, Joe was there. For the second one yesterday, I think only I and uh, and Michael could make it. Uh, interesting to hear. Very light attendance, you know. I mean, people just don't come out for these things. Very interesting, though, to hear people's ideas. One of the activities was asking people to vision as a result of the work being done with the high school, da 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 da, da what would they see? Um, and, uh, uh, Things that come up really often would be people would like to see uh, definitely some way for the building to continue to uh, support the arts. Uh, people would like to see, last night there was a, a lot of uh, uh, emphasis on to see the building continue to be used for uh, educational purposes, whether it's Votech or different kinds of preparing people for the future, not just Wilkinsburg, all over, maybe a regional hub for adult post-secondary education. There were some really good ideas that came out of it. Uh, it's, uh, and then, you know, the, the downside is it's, it's our job to kind of temper that a little bit with that fact that, you know, we can't control the proposals that'll come in, you know, based on that RFP. And it's our responsibility to the community as the school board to, to pick the one that's best. So, but I think people leave there reassured that we'll make the decision that is best best for the community. So, uh, and, and if anybody has, there aren't any more of them, uh, but uh, if you want to, uh, uh, I can ask the CDC to sort of make sure that they notify us 
and then I can share that about any other activities coming up. But that was the last of the community meetings. And I would say altogether, there were fewer than 50 residents who, who, who attended those. Uh, we will have to commence uh, 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 the search for a new member. Um, so we have talked about how to go about that. Uh, does that need to be an executive session? It cannot, yeah, maybe. It cannot be. Correct. Okay, okay. So what I'll just ask the question, what do we want to do about that? Matt has told us in the past, it's, it's legal, it's acceptable to go back to the pool of people we originally had, but there's only one person left in that pool, you know, Tony. All right. So we can, without searching or interviewing or doing any of that stuff, we can choose Tony for the FTC or we can advertise again and see the new people that we get the way we did the first time around. So I, can I get a consensus from people about which way you'd like to go? Can we reach out to Tony and if she doesn't, then open it up? So one suggestion would be, well, that means we're offering it to, that means, yeah. so Ashley's uh, suggesting that maybe we should just offer it to Tony. Um, I'd let, we need to, I need to hear from people about. I'll offer my opinion. Um, I'm aware that a candidate has already submitted mm -hmm. um, a true you know request to be considered for the position um i think it should to be fair to her um you know and, and don't get me wrong i would vote for tony right now um but i think to be fair for that person i think we, we might need to go through the process again i think we should go ahead and advertise it you know do do the right thing um because we have some interest outside of, of the current pool so okay well since this sense. just happened where how are we supposed to know someone already applied right uh, th we, we, we just got a letter I, I sent it out to everybody we just Rick just received an email, an email. Okay. yeah and it was an application from somebody um I didn't I didn't catch that. I, the, you mentioned it earlier I didn't know we already had someone yeah the person heard about it somehow and thanks I forgot all about that thank you that's an important factor so yeah right so 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 technically though was it opened up because how did that person yeah, how did they know, know? So I don't know. Up, yeah. No, I think probably somebody on the board mentioned it to somebody. My guess. I mean, they heard about it somehow. Yeah. They but heard. That doesn't that. mean it's opened up. Though. That was just word of mouth. Correct. We didn't advertise. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to accept that one, I think we should open it up so other people. Well, can. that's what I think. That's yeah. what Eric is saying. Yeah. You know, since we received that one. Eric's Eric, his his suggestion is that we advertise and open it up to all kinds to anybody. Yeah, my suggestion was not being aware that someone had applied, and we need to just we got to move. But if people are interested, open it up and see if any other people. Are interested. Yeah, we only, we have thirty days from the thirtieth uh, to get it done. What I'd like to do, if everybody, oh, I'm sorry, anybody else, uh, Monica, Rob, anybody have opinions on this? Danny, you sounded okay with opening it up. Yes. I'm I'm okay with opening it up. I, I do know of someone that's interested um, in it. Um, it's not the person that emailed. Um, so I because I told her that I wasn't sure yet, you know, that it wasn't even going to be open until the end of June. So then I would just get back to her. But anyway, my point is like, yeah, if we're going to open it up. I do know someone that's also interested. So um, yeah, that's it. Uh, great. And I'll reach out to some folks to see if they're interested that they can apply. Okay, I don't know how we advertise that, but how we'll advertise we? it again in the newspaper. Okay, okay, and, and maybe I'll, put some on the website. We'll maybe. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so we'll jump on that right away, so that because July summer vacations, da da da, mm -hmm. um, it could be, you know, it could take longer than we met. What we do right now? Yeah, okay. We do right now. We do what? Sure. We meet in July. Yes. Okay. Matt, yeah. could you just walk me through the timeline on that? I might have what the advertising for four months. There's no rule. Well, I thought it was 30 days or something. Well, you have 30 days beyond the vacancy to fill the vacancy. Um, so you have to July 30th to fill the vacancy. Okay. So you can advertise next week. I don't know what I assume your meeting is scheduled for the fourth Tuesday. Yeah, the legislative meeting? Yeah. Yeah. No. So just you know, have oh. the applications in by in July. So they have time. So remember, we got jammed up with the last one because we didn't have time to interview. Yeah, yeah we actually had to have a special meeting. Yeah, to approve it. For five days or? So is there a requirement? There's no requirement, there's no requirement on duration. That's what I mean by no rules. I mean, put it out there and one, one, one ad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so if we do one ad and allow, um, how long? Maybe seven days maximum from the time we post the ad. 
because we have to have time to interview these people. So if we just so, yes, because I have to advertise the interview meeting. That's correct. That's going to be a public. Oh, meeting. we've got to do two things. See if we have to advertise that there's an opening, and then advertise the interviews. Right. Those are those are open. Yes. Yeah, they are. But the public people just don't show up because. I, correct. Okay, because I was like nobody else was on the call. I, I know, but they okay. but they people could come. Okay. So we could probably do that at the next planning meeting. We could do interviews too, probably. We could meet early. It would be public. But depending on the agenda, we could, yeah, we could do the interviews from six to seven or something like that, I guess. This since we're together anyway. And then the fall. We the way to see how many people we actually, how many applicants we have, you know, yeah. is it going to be two? Is it going to be four? You know, that's going to, you can't let me give people 15 minutes, like speed interview. So, I mean, I think we should just wait to see how many we get and then decide on when we would do the interviews. Because again, you don't want to make them feel, you know, rushed because we have to get on our meeting at seven. So um, yeah. the uh, other thing is I wanted to ask, where would we be advertising? Where, where do we advertise? Uh, in the newspapers and we can put it on our website. Okay, cause so this will be something that can be shared on social media. <coughs> we'll have a post or something. Kelly Hannah will post it everywhere that she posts our other stuff. Okay, thanks. Um, question, and this, I just am thinking of it because I don't know, I guess we're a school district. Can it it'd be something I know I see board requests on like nonprofit talent? Can we put it on nonprofit talent as well? Once it's advertised, I mean, yeah, board members, you can share it any way you want. Oh no, no, no. Nonprofit oh. talent is like a like people go under to search for jobs and to search for like to join a board. So that's just the uh as a local search engine specifically because it is um, like run through Pittsburgh. I want to say Forbes Fund says. Do you have a um, link to that or something? Nonprofittalent.org. Yeah, what it is. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think the the last time it appeared on Indeed, it it, somebody Indeed. shared it all. Someone somehow it went Indeed. viral. You know yeah. what I mean? It was all over. The, it was on. It was on. So I was like, how much you get paid for it? It was like nothing. Yeah, right. It was on sites that I never even heard of before. <laughs> so yeah, it went viral. So based on the newspaper. So right. anyway, the deadline would be seven days after, like if you can get this in on Thursday, Thursday it would be the following Thursday, all right? Because we got to get, you know. And then the board meeting would be the third Tuesday to, to interview. Yeah, unless we have too many to do that. Okay, <laughs> let's see what we have. Okay. So then too, what we, what we need to see when people, like to make sure people are available, or is it just like you got to come this day or you can't do it? I don't know. It depends on how many people we have, but it might be you got to come. You know, it depends on how close we're getting to the deadline. That's why I'd like for us to jump on this quickly. So these are all good ideas. Uh, okay, so Rick can get that advertised. Uh, the third item I wanted to tell you, uh, P the PPS, you know, we, we have a group of people, uh, board members who would meet with a couple board members from Pittsburgh to start talking. Uh, they have not gotten back. There's nothing to report. They haven't gotten back to us on that. Um, Let's see. Oh, there's a Kelly worked on a letter that we would send out. We've always wanted to do this. So there's a letter uh, that would go out to uh, residents uh, to talk about the tax cut. And it would talk about the good things that we that we're not cutting the educational program in order to cut the taxes. So it's a good news kind of a thing and a flyer to talk about all the good stuff going on in the district. So uh, that's so Kelly's Kelly's working on that. Can I ask? Um, for whatever she's going to add into that to also um, touch on as well, like our restructuring of the district, because people still aren't aware of how we've transitioned to primary and intermediate. Really? And I think that that's important to just, you know, repeat. Okay. So folks are aware. Just as simple as when we talk about what we're sending Bellamy, we say, oh, she's going to go to Kelly. And they're like, oh, why not Turner? And, you know, then mm -hmm. I explain to them why. But I just think as we continue this conversation, it would be important to just continue to reiterate what we have done, even though it's been people some years know. now, people, people think people don't, don't they know. just don't it's know. Right. One, people don't read, but people just don't know. So the more we can just be consistent in sharing that information, um, I think is important because. And what we do to do it at war, we'll explain that to them too. Yeah. Right, right. So I've okay. done that for other things in, in our general area. People absolutely don't know. They don't have a clue about it. 
because you know how and that makes a difference in the structure. Yes. You know, when yes. people are looking at our schools and right. they're right. always comparing our test scores, they don't know that we now have a space where we're focusing on early childhood education, and then yeah. our intermediate schools are preparing our kids for middle school and what that looks like, what that means. I I went to an intermediate school. But other people who go to just elementary and middle school, they don't they don't even know what that means. Yeah, right. So I think that's something we can really, um, you know, inform people. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, and then something else we've always wanted to do was to put in two pie charts. And so on the flip side of this. We, I don't see why we couldn't have a pie chart that shows where our revenue comes from. We've always talked about doing this and where our revenue goes. You know what I mean? What are, how do we spend the money and where does the money come from? Two of the simple pie charts on the back of that same sheet uh, I think would be helpful. So I have them already, so it'd be easy to insert. Yeah, it'd be easy to, to plug those in. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, let's see. Okay. My fifth item here was to thank Rob uh, again, but I hope we already uh, did that. Um, and uh, I believe it or not, in the if you look in our policy, it used to say that we the board doesn't meet in July. Can you believe That's that? That they actually that. got away with having a whole month when we didn't meet. That's I remember that. That's why I asked that we met for like next month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do. So okay, that's it for me on report items. Unless people have questions about anything. All right. Um, that's it. So could I? Could, oh. Who's absent? Oh, Vanessa. Oh, Michael and Vanessa are absent. They nobody. Did yes, anybody but Vanessa, hear? Vanessa did say she was not. Okay, Vanessa said she wasn't able to attend, um, yeah. but Michael didn't. But maybe he doesn't. Yeah, he probably doesn't know that he has to do that. So uh, I. Uh, so I don't know what board action is. Do I? Does this have to be a motion? Board action is requested to excuse uh, Vanessa. Uh, Boofrey and Michael Rose uh, from attending tonight's meeting. So moved. All right. Uh, with, there's no voting window on this thing. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion passes. They are excused. Could I have a motion to adjourn, please? Motion to adjourn. I need a second. 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 Uh, all in favor? Of course. Uh, oh, is there a voting window for this? No. Okay, yeah, that's unanimous. Okay, great. All right. Okay, thanks, everybody. So there is now, uh, if you click, there will be a short uh, executive session with Matt, um, and everybody else is excused. Oh, yeah, i got to sign something. Just a couple of weeks. Yeah, what is this? These are all things we pretty much are it was I know. Rick will have to test that one.